more about Houston's offense, I guess, in year two under Dana. I know Clayton Toon is back. What kind of improvements have you seen uh, from their offense? I think he's uh, he's playing at a really high level. You can tell that uh, he's got a real comfort in what they're doing offensively. Um, you know, a good decision maker, and, and they obviously have uh, good skilled players on the outside. And, and uh, you know, for us, uh, we still got to do a good job against the run game too. I, I think that's important, uh, even though they're uh, really successful, been uh, throwing the football around the yard too. Um, but uh, and then you know, I, I think uh, you know, for us, we got to do a great job of. of pressing the pocket and, and getting to the quarterback too. And coach on the other side of the line of scrimmage, their run defense, obviously the best in the conference, one of the best in the nation. Yeah. What makes them so good up front to do what they did against the team like the teams like the Navy last week and teams that they've done, you know, shutting down their run all season? Yeah, re really all season long. Um, first of all, they're big uh, and long on the edges. Um, you know, thick inside. They play extremely hard, um, noticeable throughout their entire football team, but noticeable uh, in their front seven as well. Um, linebackers are extremely active and, and uh, you know, just structurally the way they play, um, you know, they're they're able to get an extra hat to the football uh, in the run game uh, more times than not. So, um, you know, for us, we still got to be balanced in what we're doing and, and uh, uh, went at the line of scrimmage. Morning, coach. So last year against Houston, Trey Nixon ended up being a huge cog, get, get leading the team in receiving yards. What are you able to say in regards to his status? And if he's not able to go, what will the receiving core have to do against the Cougar defense? Uh, um, you know, our, our group of, of wideouts out there, uh, I think it's important that, uh, you know, you're going to have one-on-one -on -one matchups and you got to do a great job of winning those. Uh, uh, part of that starts with our wideouts, but part of that's uh, DG recognizing coverage and, and then uh, pass protection is uh, important too. And, and uh, you know, got good pass rushers off the edge here in particular uh, with this front four. So, um, you know, uh, I think our guys got to be ready to compete, got to um, match and surpass their energy, their competitiveness, and, and that will give us opportunity to go make plays out on the perimeter. Josh, you, you mentioned Dylan there. Can you sort of speak to the, his development here uh, in, you know, this second full season for him, the, the stats are prolific. Obviously the offense has been, you know, extraordinarily good. What is it that you've seen specifically from him as far as growth that sort of allowed him to mature in that way? Yeah. You know, we've, we've talked a lot about it this year, just, you know, the, the questions you guys have asked. I think it really does all start with his ability just to understand conceptually everything that's happening. And, and that starts with what we're doing offensively, um, understanding his reading progression, where he needs to go versus, you know, a two high defense, single high defense matchups, um, being better in tune with the thought process of, of why we're calling and play. Um, and then being able to recognize defenses and, and understand structure and alignments and uh, a pre-snap look why post-snap it's going to be something different that you anticipated, a, a backer alignment, a safety alignment, uh, something that doesn't uh, fit into the to the grand scheme of, of the presentation of what they're trying to give you. And, and when you do that, then you're able to get to the right place. Uh, you're able to get the football out of your hands a little bit quicker. That helps your offensive line. I think as he's grown uh, as a football player from his first start to where he is now, um, he's more willing and has a better understanding of when it's time to use his feet. And, and, uh, and then we got guys playing at a really high level uh, around him. A, a quarterback's only as good as the 10 other guys around him. And, and uh, the 10 other guys have been playing at a high level here. I spoke to Richie Grant the other day, and he talked about Brandon Moore. He said he's been out at practice for a couple of weeks, putting on pads in. Can you kind of update us where Brandon is? And is there a chance he could, you know, come back this season? Yeah, um, you know, has been on the uh, the scout side of it, much kind of like uh, McKenzie's uh, rehab process and just continuing to get better every day, doing a great job in the weight room. Um, you know, our strength staff and our medical staff have done a great job in the rehab process. Uh, Brandon's been really good and, and uh, is moving really well out on the practice field right now and just kind of play it week to week with, uh, with where they progress, how fastly they're progressing. And that dictates whether uh, they're gonna be on the football field here in the coming weeks. Josh, when we talked to you at this time last week, you said you hope to have Devod Wilson available in a week or two. So it's been a week. So I'll just ask, do you expect to have Devod Wilson available for this game? You lost the uh, the coin flip there. You had to ask the question, I guess. Um, 
Now we don't have an update on on uh, on any of those guys here. All right, I guess we'll wrap up there, um, and we'll uh, talk to you guys on Saturday after the game. Thanks, appreciate coach. it, guys. Have a great day.